All right guys and girls and welcome to week 5 of the PPL Division 1 Norwich City versus the FC Volcarona And yeah, like you probably can hear, I'm not Jack, I am Lars, aka the, uh, the, the El Scissor <laughs> But yeah, like some of you probably know, I am the replacement coach of Jack Which basically means if for some reason he is not able to battle in a week of the PPL Then I will hop in for him, I will team build and I will take this battle for him So yeah, there is no missing battle and... Yeah, that's really how the PPL works. I'm the replacement of Jack, so I will definitely make sure to win this battle for him. He uh, recalled quite the battles for me in the GBA already, so with the win I can kind of play him back at least. And yeah, that's why I'm here. And yeah, let's go right into uh, the team preview, because I did not upload a team build or anything on Jack's channel right now. So let's go scan through over my team. First of all, we got the Megaladios, Dragon Dance variant with Zen Headbutt, Shadow Claw, Dragon Dance obviously, and Grass Knot for the Apowdon, because Zen Headbutt is basically their main step, and Shadow Claw is there to hit everything super effectively, which uh, uh, Zen Headbutt does, is resisted by. Like the Stami, like the Megadawa, all this good stuff. Next up, we got the Fitzy Defensive Gastrodon with the Rindo Berry, Mirror Coat, Scald, Sludge Bomb, and Recover. I main switch into the uh, Entei, and it can sponge some hits from uh, Starmie and other special attackers, even though it's physically defensive. That's why I have Mirror Code too, but I have Mirror Code and Sludge Bomb because I don't want to, the Gardevoir War to be able to uh, sub on a Mirror Code of mine. I rather have Sludge Bomb then, which is able to break and sub and stuff like that. Recover there, obviously, for. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, recover because I can want to help get health back and stuff like that. And Scald uh, just as main step, can snake some birds on th stuff, and yeah, that's always nice. Next up, we got Life Up Helios with Hyper Voice, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, and Grass Knot. Grass Knot there uh, to hit the Powdon, and the rest is just general stab because it hits his team pretty well. It has a pretty good speed tier for, speed tier for um, Frag. The only thing which outspeeds us is the Stami and potential Scarfers, so the rest is outsped by Helios, so. That's nice. Next up, we got a Choice Scarf, Nido King, Physical with uh, Poison Jab, Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Ice Beam. Ice Beam is just there to hit the Physical Defense with Powdown harder. And I just want the Choice Scarf, Nido King, because I want something which can outspeed the Mega Garden War and just straight Oko it. And Nido King fits that de description. Rock Slide is there to hit the Golbat and stuff like that. And Earthquake, Poison Jab, just in general, good step versus team. Poison Jab hits everything, Barry with Cobalion. And that does Earthquake, so Cobalion is a pretty, uh, it's not really a safe switch and he will have to take, make some risky plays with that. Next up we got Special Defense of Skarmory with Iron Head, Roost, Whirlwind and Stealth Rock. With the Wakan Berry, this is my man and my main switch into the Mega Gardevoir War because I can take any hit. I have a voice for Psychic, of course I resist because of Steel Typing, because of my special, being stage intensive, Hyper Voice isn't doing too much, save with Psyshock and Psychic of course, because uh, I mean even though I'm spe fully specially defensive, uh, my physical defense is still higher, so it's a good switch into the Cobalion, Cobalion as well. And yeah, the Canberra is for Thunderbolt on Guard of War because I'm affecting to pack him Thunderbolt on, uh, on Guard of War because HP Fire won't do too much to me if I'm special defensive, Thunderbolt will still do a lot. So yeah, and I can, can't can Oko him with Iron Head, but if he's the standard Mega Guard of War, like with a bit uh, uh, defense investment, not many HP investment, I can, after two rock switching, I can KO with Iron Head before I just get him range of basically everything. And next up, we got Physical Defensive Floggers with uh, standard Floggers basically with Moonblast, Protect, Wish, and Aroma Therapy. This thing is mainly there because I need to switch to the Rotomo. Rotomo is a pretty big threat to my team because Gastrodon gets bought by Leaf Storm, uh, Skarmory gets bought by Electric Stab, and my Ladios, which is actually, would be a good switch into the Rotom, is not because it's the Dragon Dance variant and I don't like getting burnt. So that's why I have Flourgis there, my main switch into uh, Flourgis uh, for the Road to Mo and any other special attacker he potentially has. Can get some wishes to people, can get Aurora Therapy to get rid of statuses on anything. And yeah, that's Flourgis for you. Now, looking at Frank's team, he brought the Road to Mo, like I already said, it's a big, pretty big threat to my defensive core of uh, Gastrodon and Skarmory. I need my Flourgis healthy, but if he will switch around and wears my Flourgis down, that could get scary. I'm expecting an offensive variant, not. It doesn't have to be choice, maybe expert build or life or something like that, but I'm definitely expecting an offensive variant. Next up, Cobalion, probably physically offensive with Iron Head plus Combat, because that's pretty good coverage for my team. Stealth Rock, because it's only Stealth Rock on the team, and then he may have Thunder Wave maybe to hit the uh, Ladios or any slowdown stuff. I don't know, maybe Volt Switch, stuff like that. Then Mega Gardevoir, I'm expecting free attack substitute with uh, Psyshock, Hyper Voice, Thunderbolt, and substitute. Golbat, don't know yet if physically or special defense. It may have Defog in case he doesn't want Rapid Spin on, uh, on Stami, which is reasonable because Stami is a pretty good matchup with my team. Uh, definitely Roost. 
And for the other attacks, I don't know, Toxic, Taunt, Super Fang, Brave Bird, U-Turn, many viable options he has on Golbat. I didn't expect it actually to bring it, but but yeah, he brought it and so and now needs to figure out if it's CC or Special Defensive, and yeah, we're down pretty quickly. And then we have Entei, uh, I'm f f expecting the Choice variant, like just uh, Choice Bandit. He may not be Choice, maybe with Expert Belt and Hidden Power Grass to hit my uh, um, Gastrodon and stuff like that, so I will have to scout for that. But uh, my main, I, I think he's uh, he's choice because that's like the best variant and stuff like that. And as last scam, uh, Stami, I'm just thinking uh, life of offensive Stami because it does pretty well with the coverage it gets, like Scald, Ice Beam, Grass Knot, and then as last maybe uh, Thunderbolt for the Skarmory, maybe Rapid Spin to get rid of hazards, maybe Recover to recover uh, life of recoil. But yeah, these are basically what I expect from a Stami. And yeah, that's enough for team preview. Let's hop right into the match. Yeah, sorry for that popping up, but yeah, let's hop right to the match. I decided to leave him for Mega Ladios because I can get my Mega off versus the uh, Rotom. Even though I'm not a switch in, I will definitely scare him out with the Draco Media on the Rotom because like I said, I'm expecting an offensive one and in general he doesn't want to take a Draco. He decides to leave with the Stami. Uh, I'm scared out because even though I could drop a Draco on him, which he is fearing, uh, he switched out here. Um, I don't want to stay in because this is more my late game sweep. I don't want to think it worn down by an Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, anything with that sort. Yeah, he goes to the Gavalio predicting the Drake, which I sadly don't have. I switch out into my Gastrodon because that's my check. Works out pretty well for me because I can take on the, uh, the Gavalio 2 unless he has HP Grass. So I just fire a safe Scald here, maybe snack a burn or something. He switched out into his Golbat. Taking this damage, I'm still not sure if it's really a special defensive with the Violite. Little damage like that is pretty close. But yeah, he switched out here into his Stami, probably predicting my. Um, what did he predict? I don't know really what he predicted here. But yeah, I just switched out into my Scarab because I was predicting a Toxic and stuff like that. I can stay in versus the uh, Stami in case he has Thunderbolt. I want to keep my Volcan Berry. And I don't enjoy taking Skulls and get a burn either because I have Iron Head. So I just go into my uh, Splodge just to sponge any special hit. Um, yeah, he decides to go for the Skulls, gets the burn on my Floorges, but he's basically forced to switch out here, he can't do much to me, so I just decide to go for the Aromatherapy and get rid of the burn, because I don't like my Floorges getting burned, I need to stay healthy to be a switch into the Rotom, and the Stami basically too, and take a hit from the Megado War. Floorges is very important in this match, so I decide to Aromatherapy here. He used that as a basically a free switch into his Entei. I mean, he could have taken the Moobless as well, and Wish or Aromatherapy was pretty obvious, so he goes on his Entei. I just, uh, after this Aurotherapy uh, animation, I decide to just go for the Protect and Scout what he wants to do because, like I already said, I'm expecting him to be the Choice variant, the Choice Bandit Entei. He is already uh, sh shiny, which makes the thing it's definitely adamant and definitely the second fire on E Street, so it has to be adamant. So, yeah, I just go for the Protect. He actually reveals the Toxic right here. And to Scout, if he is Choice or not, I switch, still switch out into my Gastrodon right here because if he's not Choice, he can just go for a second fire here. Uh, expecting my Neo King or my Skarmory to come in on the Toxic, but he switched out here, which makes me think this is definitely a Choice Bandit Entei. So I already got that confirmed. I switch out into my Gastrodon, like I already said, get the matchup versus the Golbat, and if Golbat has Taunt, he wins 1v1 one one versus me, even if I ask him, he can just roost on me, he will outspeed me. And then he switches out here, makes me think he doesn't actually have Roost. He decides to switch out, uh, doesn't actually have Taunt. He switched out into his Mega Gardevoir, trying to get a Trace Storm Drain on me, but I was switching out here with the Golbat, uh, maybe thinking he would go Toxic on me, he would maybe taunt me. I just go safe switch into my uh, Skarmory, because even though he could taunt me, he can't really do anything to me. Get a pretty nice matchup with the Gardevoir, uh, maybe you thought that was a prediction, but it sadly wasn't. And yeah, I used the chance to go for the Iron Head, which was a mistake on my part. I still has my Sturdy intact, there was no way he's staying in. I could have just gone from Rars here. But yeah, he used the chance to go this road to Mo, big threat to my team. He's showing the leftovers, which makes me think it's definitely more of a defensive variant. So it's not an offensive variant, which is nice for me. I could just switch out into my Floorges to uh, sponge any hit he could go for. Like, I don't want to switch on my Gastrodon because I can just switch up move and go for Leaf Storm, uh, which would do more to my Floorges. I could catch him and go for Wish and stuff like that, but I was not feeling so real and switching uh, Gastrodon on the road to Mo. But yeah, he goes for the Wall Switch and switches out into his uh, Cobalion. I'm obviously scared out with my floor just because I don't want to take an Iron Head. I could, but I don't want to have so much damage as still this thing for the Rotom Mo. So I switch out into my Skarmory, which can take anything this thing wants to throw at me. He decides to go for his rocks because, yeah, my switch up was pretty obvious. He used a chance to get up his rocks. I decide, yeah, I want to get up my rocks too. Because I think him, his, uh, his side hurt, his hurt Merva rocks on my side. But he goes for the Wall Switch, and I should have scouted for that, but it was a pretty big mistake on my part. 
Now with Akamberry is popped and if he has Thunderbolt on Gardevoir, this thing is not a switch in anymore. And yeah, that was a mistake on my part. I should at least scout for the Volt Switch. I mean, it was it could have yeah, it was it was a viable option for him as, as a move, so I should have scouted for that. Uh, but I think this get have a rock which is nice. And yeah, he goes into his Rotom. I'm obviously scared out by the Rotom as well, so I go back into my Floorges and I don't like switching in my Floorges so often, even especially if I have rocks up. And the, with the Volt Switch, he will just hit my floor, just get out, get anything else, get me out again. I'm getting worn down pretty fast on my floor, just so I am pretty desperate to get up a wish up pretty soon with my floor, just basically as soon as possible. And yeah, he goes here not into his Cavalier, actually, he goes into his uh, Golbat, which was very surprising on my part because my thought was that he doesn't have Taunt, so I get, get a, a, a wish up. He actually shows that he, in a few seconds, that he has the taunt, but yeah, I guess we get some free uh, turns of uh, free recovery with leftovers. So yeah, I can't get the wish up, I do not get the recovery I want, but at least I get some leftovers recovery, so I can, I get basically one uh, rock switch in for free with these two turns of leftovers. And yeah, now I can't stay in Moon Blast, Moon to anything, I just switch out back into my Skarmory, I think. No, into my Helios, of course, yeah, I have to take the rules right here, I have to take the rules right here because it was half health and this with rocks it would go and worn down. I could even predict a defog in case he wants to get rid of the rocks, but I can go back into my Helio disc here. He goes to the Super Fang actually, gets half of health gone of my Helio disc and I feel free to fire off a Hyper Voice here because it would have killed the uh, Golbat from that range and it hits everything neutrally barring the Cobalion which he probably won't switch in on me. So yeah, I go for the Hyper Voice here, I get a nice crit on the Rotom. After the match, the cow, this crit actually merit. If I wouldn't have gotten the crit, it had, like just had like a 0.4% chance to uh, two hit KO after rocks and leftovers. So this crit merit, but I take it. I take it two hit KO the Rotom, which is great for me. This, like I said, Rotom was a big threat to my defense, of course. So I'm glad that the, this thing is gone, and I still have two hits in my uh, in my uh, what you call it in my uh, healer list after rocks. And he has lost his electric switch in, so after that I can just spam uh, Thunderbolt or Volt switch or whatever. I definitely want to switch out versus the uh, Starmie. I can just go into my Gastrodome because Ice Beam or he goes for Ice Beam here. But I can even take Psychics or Psycharks or anything basically he wants to do. Scald, I'm obviously moon that for, but he is this too, so I doubt he would go for that. But yeah, I can take that. Not as well because it's a crit. Uh, didn't matter as much as the crit on Rotom, of course, but it's a return crit, what can you do? And yeah, this is the turn I decided to go for the Mirror Code because I'm predicting him to go for Grass Knot, otherwise he can't touch my Gas Realm, but he actually goes for the Tark like you can see here. Which is pretty bad for me, the old Mirror Code tactic is gone, it's thrown out of the window, and yeah, now we'll be very cautious about this uh, Gas Realm with the special attacker, so I, can't, I basically can't expect to catch him with the Mirror Code anymore. And yeah, I, he doesn't have Grass Knot, I was very much expecting him to have Grass Knot because Ice Beam won't do much, Scald, obviously Moon 2, otherwise Starry can't really touch me, like Psychic, Psyshock won't do anything. Um, I use this turn at least to get a free recover, or not a free recover, to get a recover, basically to get back to a good amount of health to take on his mons. He uses his chance to go into his Crobat. I expect him, this time I expect him definitely a Roost. He's like, he's too much worn down, he has to go for a Roost, or if he really wants to, he could go for a Defog, if that is the way of hazard rule and he's really fearing rocks. So I use this chance to go into my Helo Disc. Uh, I mean, I can't even take a Super Fan because obviously it won't kill me, it will just do 8 HP because it will do half. He indeed goes to the Roost, and yeah, that is a free Thunderbolt for me. He has not no switch into a Thunderbolt anymore, or at least nothing which wants enjoys taking the life of Thunderbolt from a Hero Disc. So I just do that. He decides here to sack his Goldback, which is nice for me because now all his ground immunity is gone, and my game plan from here on now is basically to wear down his one so I can just spam Earthquake with my Scarf Nido King. I already have confirmed that none of his mons are Scarf. None of his mons he has left are Scarf. Nidhi Queen outspeeds everything. He has no ground immunity left. He has no ground resistance left. My game plan is wear this thing down so I can spam Earthquake. So he goes for the Ice Beam. I, I did, did not want to uh, preserve Lizard here. He would have died to another Rock Switch in. So and I don't want to. Want to uh, I don't have. I don't have any hazard removal on my own. So yeah, I just decided to sack this. I go into my floor just right here because I. This is my time to get a wish up versus this thing. Which I will do right here, just go for a wish. He switches out, he doesn't want to take a Moonblast, which is uh, which is good because this is one is his only thing which he can take, still take an Earthquake. He used the chance to go on end tank, which is a pretty safe switch, but he takes Rocks damage, which is nice for me, of course. So yeah, I just go for wish, and after that I will go for Protect, because yeah, this thing is a uh, Choice Bandit in my I think it's Choice Bandit, so I can just scout what he wants to do. And yeah, that's basically how this turn will go. I would wish I can protect and I'm I got the health back on Floridus and it's looking pretty good for me or uh, again like I, it was good in, 
a bit dire after my mirror code failed and my Pokemon Barrier was popped and yeah, my plans were crumbling and crumbling but now I feel like I'm back in the good position, my walls are in a good amount of HP, his ground immunities are gone, I have a gameplay for everything. And yeah, he decides to go for the second fire, this means I get a free, free switch into my Gastron, or not a free switch, I get a switch into my Gastron basically because obviously I resist the, uh, the second fire and it won't do much to me. He actually predicts that. Oh, wait, no. That's another turn. He doesn't predict that. He just goes for the second fire, gets a good amount of damage on me. And yeah, I already saw that his switch into this is the uh, Mega Garden World because he will trace my. He will trace my. Uh, what you call it? Uh, the, the thing. Storm Drain. Yeah, Storm Drain, and he would be willing to Skull, get a special attack race. It would be devastating for me. So I decide I switch out here into my. Boy, I don't despoil it. Come on, what do I switch into? What do I switch into? I should have gone for recovery here, probably, because to get health back, but I didn't. I decided to switch out here into my floor just. Because, uh, okay, wait, why did I do that? Why did I switch into floor here if I predict the Mega Guard War? Okay, maybe I didn't predict the Mega Guard War. I just predict in general to switch out. So I want to go into my. Uh, into my. what you call it? Into my floor just. I, actually, I think I predict the Stami. Yeah, I think I predict the Stami because with the Toxic, it can actually take me out if he has recover. So I decided to go on my floor or something. Yeah, sorry, this battle is some time ago. It seems I break the stami. Maybe I just did a, a bad play. Who knows? I decided to stay here, get some damage on the uh, Garda Wall because that brings it in range of Earthquake. Poison Jab would of course Oko, but now it's definitely in range of Earthquake. I get a nice special attack drop, which is very lucky on my part because now a second Hyper Voice will definitely not kill me. It shouldn't have killed me either way, but now I can just push up on that. But I switch out here, predicting the Entei. So I. Oh, wait, not with Entei. God damn it, I have no idea what I'm predicting here. What did I predict here? He goes to Wish. I was definitely not predicting the entry. Why did he go into Skarmory? Okay, I was predicting something. I <laughs> God damn it. Okay, I'm sorry for this narration, it's a bit sloppy. But yeah, I go to my Skarmory here. He used to actually switch out, so that means he does not have Thunderbolt, I guess. I decide to just go for the Whirlwind, either sack my Skarmory or whatever he wants his Wish into. He is not getting it, so I can go for the Whirlwind. So he doesn't, yeah, does not get the Wish into the thing he wants, basically. And yeah, otherwise he would just sack my Skarmory because it's not doing too much this game. But yeah, it seems he doesn't have Thunderbolt to it. Actually, it's still very val valuable versus his, uh, versus his Mega Gardevoir. He gets the Wish up, which is basically one move slot gone for him. So I think he may... Yeah, like I think he doesn't have Thunderbolt. He switches out here. I just go for the Iron Head because maybe he was predicting another Whirlwind from me. So I just go for the Iron Head on the incoming... Uh, Incoming, which called Cobalion. He can take that very well, but I don't think Cobalion. I can take this on every day. A Wolf Switch isn't too much because especially offensive. Close combat won't do much, even though it's neutral because I still have such high uh, physically physical defense. And if he tries to set up on me, I can just whirlwind him out. So I decide uh, to just go for the Roost here because if he tries to set up on me, I'm back at sturdy. I can take any hit and I can just whirlwind him out. But he decides to go for the close combat. I can Roost up on this, get back to full. Well, actually, not full yet. Uh, I'm still at not close to full. I think the turn after that I get to full. Because he decides to go for a second close combat. And yeah, my plan is basically here to just get him to minus 3 and then switch out my, switch in my Ladios. Because at minus 3, a Zen Headbutt is an Oko to the uh, to the Cobalion. So at minus, I want to get him to minus 3 defense. So he, he is at minus 2 already. He used two close combats. Now I'll just go for the Roost here. And the turn after that, I will go for the Roost again. To, yeah, to like basically just take the hits from him. He may just want to get some damage on my uh, on my Skarmory, but even though even if I'm playing was not to switch out, I will win this battle. I have way more roost than he has close combat. He has only eight. I have uh, 16 roost. At this at this point, he decides to go for the Wolf Switch. Like you can see, it doesn't do much. I just go for the second, third roost because I was like, oh, come, maybe go for the close combat, but he didn't. He saw that he can't win this battle. One the one, so I just go for the roost. He goes into his Skarm his Stami, and yeah, I go for the roost right here. I can now switch back into my into my floor chest. I don't think he will go for gold because Gastrodon is a pretty pretty obvious switch and I can take a combination of an ice beam and a skull. At least I should be able to. That's that's what Mark Hulk said. So I switch out here, my Scarbury is still valuable versus the Kobalion versus the Gardevoir, it still can do some stuff. So I go into my floor chest. He decides to go for the ice beam. Like I predicted, I can take that, and after the Kalk, I can. It said I can definitely take a skull, but the problem is if he gets a burn, I will die. And I was thinking if I could protect you to get more leftovers, for example, and stuff like that. But I would still be in range of a skull plus a burn, so why risk that? That he can like get a free switch or something like that. So I just go for the wish here, 
because I can get if if I don't get burned, I can get this wish up and get the Flurge back to a good amount of health. But he sadly gets the burn, so yeah, that's Flurge just going down right here. I get the wish in the air, which is actually good for me still because now my Flurge goes down and I get a free switch into my Mega Ladios. And looking at the squad, I can if he goes for Ice Beam, it will not kill me with the wish. I will get basically all my health back I lose from Ice Beam. And yeah, if I set up here, everything on this team is in range. If he doesn't have Thunder Wave on uh, the Cobalion, he already uh, showed Volt Switch there for a close combat. So I thought this last move has to be Iron Head, otherwise he can't touch my Florges. So if he doesn't have Thunder Wave on Cobalion, I can sweep here with my Latios. I just Mega Evolve here and go for the Dragon Dance. I expect him to go for the Ice Beam right here to get some damage on. Because obviously because of the Wish, it, it basically does no, no damage unless he gets like a Freeze or something like that. But he actually shows his substitute, probably predicting a Draco Meteor and yeah, probably yeah, wearing me down my special attack. So that is now a problem because now my wish comes through. I am back at full health, but now I have to take an Ice Beam from the Stami, which is problematic for me. I just go for the Shadow Crawl right here because I was not sure if Zen Headbutt could uh, break this up if he has some HP investment. I probably should have got, should, could have gone for Zen Headbutt, but I don't want to miss. So yeah, I just go for the Shadow Claw here, break this up. And now it's been everything and basically one thing has to die. But this is not a full sweep of Megaladios because he had that sub. If he didn't have the sub and didn't have Thunder Wave on Cobalion, which he which he didn't, we you will see in a minute, he didn't have Thunder Wave on Cobalion. So this could have potentially been a sweep of Megaladios. But sadly Frank had the substitute on his superstar, which uh, yeah, good probation on his part, uh, kind of sad for me. I just go for a second Shadow Claw right here. He goes into his uh, Cobalion and yeah, after if he has Iron Head, I definitely can take an Iron Head plus an extreme speed. I can only take one of those. So the ice beam damage was pretty crucial, so good substitute on his part. My only hope is basically I'll go for his headbutt and flinch him so that uh, he can't get a, an attack off on me. So I would just go for his headbutt, it is my most damaging move for him anyways. I just come on, flinch him, flinch him, do it for me, flinch him! But I said you don't get the flinch, he can get the iron head off. And yeah, I can kill now the Cobalion, I can just go for uh, Shadow Claw in case he tries to uh, go into Stami on the Zen Headbutt or something like that. Uh, I don't know why he should do that, but maybe he decides to do that, well, who knows. But yeah, I just go for Shadow Claw, kill that, kill him. And yeah, now he gets to switch into his Entei and can basically just kill him with E-Speed. So that's all uh, Negaladios does this match. I actually decided to switch out here into my uh, Gastrodon. I was playing it way too safe here because if he locks himself in the extreme speed, I could have just gone to Skarmory and yes, uh, whirl with him out or something like that. But I decided to go into my rocket right here because I thought maybe I can take two extreme speeds. But yeah, the Kalk said I couldn't and I basically just sacked my Gastrodon right here. Which is sad. I should have probably gone into my Skarmory because yeah, I can I can take a hit. But I was playing way too safe. If he like is a very ballsy player and goes for the Sacred Fire, I would lose my Skarmory, which still does a lot of work to his team, so I don't want to risk that. Probably it was too safe, too safe of a play, but I felt that way at the moment, so I did go for that. Now I can go into my Nido King and just fight with a Poison Jab, basically, because his Cobalion is dead too, and now I can even just spam Poison Jab, because, yeah, it's stronger than Earthquake because of Sheer Force, and nothing wants to take that. Everything is too hit KO'd, at least my Poison Jab. Something dies here. He decides to let his uh, Mega Gardevoir down, uh, so I can just go for Poison Jab. He gets a free switch into his, uh, into his, what you call, into his Stami now. I can't uh, one shot at the point jab at the moment, it's range set and still needs some damage on his. So yeah, he goes into his, uh, gets gets some rocks damage, but he has leftovers, so I need still need this thing down to like, uh, Poison Jab does 62 to 70 something percent. So I need it down at a very good amount of, uh, low amount of, uh, at least close to half. I just decided to sack my, uh, to sack my Mega Ladios here, and yeah, like the only ones I have left right now are Nido King and Skarmory. The only ones he has left are Starmy and Entei. So I decide to go into my Starmy, uh, my Skarmory here. He has, I know his full full moveset. He does not have Thunderbolt, so I can wear it, wear it down a bit with Iron Head, and yeah, maybe get it down to a range where Poison Jab will kill it. He goes for the Skull. I just hope he doesn't get the burn because if he gets a burn, it's basically over because my Iron Head won't do much, won't do enough damage. I go for Iron Head, get some decent damage, he may, may, Poison Jab may actually already kill at this range, it's not a guaranteed. So yeah, I decide to go for the Iron Head again right here to get a guaranteed in range of the, uh, of the, of the Poison Jab of my new king. He doesn't get the burn, which is nice. And yeah, basically I, I'm going free, free for Iron Head here because if he decides to go for Substitute, let me Poison right, right here because I talk a lot. 
Um, if he decides to go for substitute at one point in these two turns, I could still whirl him them out because I can take a scald at that range, and then I would basically win because uh, he would lose enough health from the substitute and rocks to be in range of poison jab and and uh, yeah, and take it. I can just he has that one HP and will kill my scum. Okay, uh, barring that, this is the last turn. I can't take another scald. If I go for Iron Head here, he goes, he goes for substitute. I lose the game, so I have to go for whirlwind here. He indeed goes for the substitute trying to go for the win, but yeah, gladly I decide to go for the whirlwind right here. And now this game is over. Entei comes in, is at 1 HP, he can kill my Skarmory, but uh, Neo King can now just clean up with Poison Jab. No need to risk anything, I just stay in here, go for second whirlwind in case something happens. I could have gone for anything here, could have gone for Iron Head, could have gone for Zeus. Anything would have been possible to still win this game, but if, if he like makes something weird and switch back out in Stami or something like that. But yeah, uh, Skarmory uh, goes down here, I can go back into Ninja King, and this is the 1-0 victory for the Norwood Skitty over the uh, FC Volcarona, aka Frank Drought. Um, I'm sorry, Frank, that you had to face me <laughs> instead of Jack. <laughs> I mean, Jack, had, he, had, he had the same team, he could have done, just done the same as me. But yes, um, I'm glad I could take this win for, for Jack, of course, kind of the repayment for all the uh, matches he recorded for me, or yeah, was able to record for me in the GBA. Good game, Frank, definitely. It came down to the wire with 1 0. Sadly, my Wakan Barry, Skarmory, my Miracle, uh, Gaston, they all didn't work out. That Starmie was a hell of a threat versus my team. I I was kind of underprepared for like the toxic substitute Starmie, but I just didn't. I just didn't expect that. So, definitely a GG, a close 1 0 victory for the Norwich Skiddy. And yeah, that's basically all for this match. If you liked what you saw, definitely leave a like uh, on. Uh, Jack's video here, it will be on Jack's channel, I guess my channel will be somewhere in the description, so if you want to check that out, it would be nice of course, but definitely leave a like on that video, subscribe to Jack, he's a great guy, and yeah, that's all from me, and yeah, definitely check out the links, all the links of Jack in the description, I guess he has his Twitter there too, I don't know what he does in the description, but yeah, great guy, great friend, definitely stay on this channel if you're watching this, like, it's kind of weird to have a video on a different channel, but yeah, maybe you want to check out me, who knows, who knows, but yeah, that's basically all for me for this video, and yeah, in case Jack has to not, has to, can't play again at some point, I will be back, but if not, uh, yeah, see you at another point, I guess. <laughs> that was a great ending, goddammit, I'm so good at this, but yeah, that's all for me, ciao.